Hey fellow geocachers, I have something a little special with me. I know that this has been out for a little while now, and I have found a few caches with them, but I have never done this before, but I have a Garmin Chirp. We're going to find out how to program this. Never done this before, we're going to learn as we go. Alright, here is the packaging. Comes in this little thing. And there is the little guy. It does come with the battery to put in there. And also a little adhesive to attach. Well, I'll attach that afterwards. So I'm going to put this into the battery or into the chirp itself. Alright, battery's in the thing. Now I'm gonna attach this little sticky thing. That'll be handy to stick just about anywhere. Now at this point, you're gonna need a compatible GPS device that will uh, program the uh, Garmin Sherp. I have the Garmin Map 62 ST right here. Any of the 62 series, uh, some Colorados and Oregon's, I believe. Maybe not the Colorados, but the Oregon's, I do believe, will be able to. The, uh, the Dakotas should be able to program. Um, I know for sure the 62 ST will be able to. So that's what we're going to be programming with today. Turn it on. Okay, now we got to go to. Ooh, hey, we're receiving already. Ah, it's not programmed. That's what we wanted to see. Hey, but so far, this is pretty easy already. Let's go ahead and program. Here, I'm going to name. I'm going to try and put in the name of the cache that I have, which shows up on there. Well, there is a limit. You're only you're limited to a certain amount of characters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Limited to nine characters on here. I couldn't type the whole thing that I wanted, so gotta go back and uh, do some deleting. All right. Hopefully that'll fit. Done. Failed. Chirp not found. Well, what's going on here? I don't know what that was about, but I just restarted that process and it went in. I can change the message. It'll be interesting to see if I'm limited on the number of characters I put in here, too. Oh, sweet, I got my uh, whole comment in there. Now hit done, and it should send it to the chirp. So it is connected, so hopefully it shouldn't fail this time. Sweet, we are complete. Now I can put in new coordinates. Well, let's just go manual entry because that's where I know. Well, I'm gonna... All right, got my coordinates in for where you need to go next. The way we're setting up this cache. It done. Hopefully, it should connect right up and send it to the chirp, which it looks like it is.
Sweet. I'm not quite sure what these two areas are for, but since I put in the manual entry, hopefully that'll uh, get us what we need to do. You know what I'm going to do here? Since I don't like the message, I'm going to put in the GC code for this thing. Since the GC code is only seven characters and I'm limited to nine, Now there's the information. I do believe this is the information people get when they f try to find, uh, or get, they get within range of this chirp. I'm, I'm going to try this now and see if we can find this chirp and see if we do get that information. Okay, shut it off again. Turn it back on. Well, turning back on, I must have my chirp searching on from a previous cache. I didn't realize I had it still on. I'll see if I can go in there and show you how to turn it on and off. But we'll show this here now to go to chirp, chirp details and see if we get our information that we need. And there we go. Got our serial number, got our last uh, visit, um, which is right now. And this is our first visit. The final location for our cache with the coordinates and it tells you how far away it is please note that <laughs> even though this was a great deal of distance from where I'm currently am I am away from where I'm going to be placing this so that's why it is so far away it's not sending people you know on a four hour road trip to the next you know, cache now that I have it programmed or the way it looks like I have it programmed I'm going to show you now how to uh, turn on and off the chirp searching ability on a 62. Page to geocaches, menu, set up geocaches. Ah oh, yes, my chirp searching is on. I can turn it off. Now the chirp status is gone. I can turn it back on. It's searching. And we're receiving information. My second attempt. So, it does look like I am fully programmed on this thing. Since there's this program chirp field, one thing you, you can do on here uh, is you can erase and you can change the name and the message uh, and all that wonderful stuff. And if I am not mistaken, I believe I am the only one that can program this chirp with this GPS. And somebody else in the 62 or Dakota or Oregon cannot come on and program this one. It is linked, it is paired together, and only this GPS can program this little guy. So now, my little Garmin chirp is programmed. It's ready to go and get placed out in the field. And there is no on-off button, which is a good thing because you know, uh, when a, a geocacher comes to nearby this place, you know, they're not going to be looking for this thing, they just want to receive the information. So, battery does last on here, uh, it does, does not last a long time, it only, I think they say only about a year, give or take, and, um, but be sure to also place it kind of high, because higher will get you know, a radio signal to go farther. Um, it can be hidden, um, but probably not best to be hidden around like metal, because that will reduce how far it can be, the signal can be sent. So, I do feel that this was uh, kind of uh, easy to do. Uh, I thought this was going to be more intensive, but uh, I'm actually kind of surprised that it was rather simple to program uh, using my GPS. So, now that you know, go get your own and play some more chirp-enabled caches. And until next time, I shall see you in the cache continuum.